Hello, my name is Anirudh and I'm an application engineer at SimScale. And today I'm going to show you how you can set up and run a computational flow dynamic simulation on a Francis water turbine using our cloud-based simulation tool. So let's get started. I'm really excited to showcase uh, some of the features and what SimScale can do to model rotating machinery. Now the setup process and the modeling strategies that I show you are valid for any kind of rotating machinery. So it's not just uh, Francis water turbines. You can use what I show you today to simulate any types of uh, pumps, fans or blowers, compressors, propellers, anything really with a rotational component on it, you can model it this way. The reason I chose Francis water turbines is that they're a good example of combining axial and radial flow. And uh, more importantly, they're used really widely in the hydropower industry, accounting for more than 60% of the global power output. So any uh, improvements that we, that we can make in the design, any gains that we can make in the efficiency can have a significant impact. So the main objective is to study the design of a Francis turbine and characterize its performance at different operating points. And we're gonna really try and understand how we can use simulation to really improve the efficiency of our design and drive our workflow. So the plan is I'm gonna show you a couple of slides just to set the problem up, and then we'll jump into the platform uh, into SimScale where I'll give you a live demonstration of how you can use the software to set up the simulation. And then we'll come back to the presentation and look at some additional results. Now the geometry is pretty straightforward. We have a simple inlet here through which the water enters and is guided through the spiral casing after which it rotates around and hits this first set of blades. So these are known as the guide vanes and they guide the water into the next set of blades which are known as the runners. So these are the blades in the middle uh, that actually rotate and generate the electricity. From there, the water goes down into this draft tube where the pressure is equalized and it exits out of the back here to minimize any losses. So you can think of these fixed guide vanes as the stator and these moving runner blades as the rotor. So a quick note on the simulation setup. Uh, I'm, I'm initially gonna study one operating point where I specify the flow rate as well as the rotational speed of the blades. The physics is gonna be completely, uh, it's gonna be incompressible steady state flow as well as fully turbulent. So let's exit the presentation and jump onto the platform where I can show you a live demonstration. So if you've not seen this before, this is the SimScale platform. The first thing uh, to notice is the URL up top. So SimScale is completely browser-based. That means that there's no installation required. You don't need any maintenance. I can just use my login uh, in, and open up a browser tab and start simulating. The user experience is very uh, is very clean. So as you can see, the most of the screen real estate is dominated by the 3D viewer. On the top left, I have my geometries. So these are the these are the CAD models for the different designs. Just at the bottom of that, I have my simulation tree, and this is where I control my simulation from. So let's look at some results. So based on the setup that I'd shown you in the slides, I've already run the simulation, and I first want to show you the kind of design insights that you can gain by running a simulation and what result quantities that you can actually use to inform your design decisions. Now the results are viewed using different types of filters and I already have a few set up today. Now what I like to start with are particle traces and as the name suggests uh, what we're doing is following a particle as it moves through the domain. Now I like to use this first because it gives me a good qualitative understanding of some of the larger flow features in my domain. So I can clearly see the water comes in from the top. It rotates around these uh, the guide vanes and then the runner blades, after which the swirl component is uh, imparted onto the velocity. And then it exits out of the draft tube at the back. So this gives me a good qualitative understanding. So let me uh, pause this animation and remo remove this particle trace and then we can use uh, some of the other filters to dig in a little bit deeper. 
So now that we've kind of broadly understood the flow field uh, inside this turbine, I want to look at some numbers and I want to look at the uh, pressure drop and the flow rate through the system. So what I can do is I can color my part according to the pressure and uh, that'll help me view the uh, pressure differential across my system. So if you remember, I had specified a 16 meter cube per second flow rate across the system. And I want to I want to understand what kind of pressure head or pressure differential is required in order to pull that amount of flow through the system. So what I can do is press select my inlet and then press this bulk calculator and that will give me the average pressure at the inlet. So I can just as easily change the units. So if I'm not comfortable in Pascals, I can use my legend and change the unit to PSI and I have 273 PSI at the inlet. At the outlet, it's just zero pressure. So now I know the pressure differential across my system. Now, if I change the pressure into the velocity instead, then you will notice that instead of uh, the, the average pressure at the inlet, I'm now looking at the flow rate through the system. So now that I've understood the flow rate and the pressure drop, I want to dig in a little bit deeper and understand the flow around my plates. So in order to do that, I'm going to use a cutting plane. So as the name suggests, I'm basically cutting the domain and looking at what is going on inside. So what I can do is zoom in to my guide vanes and use these uh, arrows to understand the direction as well as magnitude of the velocity. So I can straight away see that there is a lot of flow separation on these guide vanes to the right of my screen. On the left, the flow is still attached. It, it isn't great, but it's particularly bad on the right. So this is something that I can definitely improve with a second design. And I'm going to show you that shortly after, the, after this. Now it's very easy to manipulate these cut planes. I can very easily just move the position around, up and down to uh, understand or to look at different uh, cross sections of my domain. So another example of this is I want to understand how my draft tube is performing. So instead of looking at the velocity, what I will do is I will change the normal of my cut plane. So I will change it on X normal and I will look at the pressure instead. So the purpose of the draft tube, uh, like I said, is to minimize any losses by making sure that the pressure uh, gradient is really smooth. So straight away, I can see there's a sharp gradient around this neck. So where the flow is changing from green, so lower pressure to higher pressure yellow, I would ideally like this to be smoother around this neck. So this is something that I can again improve with my design. I can study this further by using my probe point or inspect point tool and I can just probe a particular point and it'll tell me the pressure on that. Right. So now that I've kind of understood the performance of my blades and my draft tube, I want to show you how I can set up this simulation. So let's go back uh, to our geometries and start from the top. So with SimScale, you can upload your CAD models by clicking the plus button here. We work with most common CAD formats, as you can see here, and you can upload as many different designs as you want. On the right, I can see a quick breakup, a breakup of my CAD. I just have the flow volume as well as a simple cylindrical body around my blades to model the rotation. I can get started by hitting create simulation. And this will show you all the different simulation types that you can actually run on SimScale. So it's not just uh, CFD or flow analysis. You can also do additional heat transfer. Uh, you can also look at structural analysis, say, to understand the forces on your blades. So in my case, it's just going to be simple incompressible flow. And I can hit create simulation to start a new one. When I do that, you'll notice that I get a new simulation called Incompressible 3, and I can just name, uh, change the name to say Design 1 or Design 3 and call it whatever I want. The setup process is pretty straightforward. So the workflow is just top to bottom, and I'm trying to get green checkboxes everywhere. So instead of these red circles, I want to ensure that there's a green checkbox. So immediately I can see there's a couple of things that I need to do. So I need to assign some materials and some boundary conditions. With materials, it's pretty straightforward. Cl clicking plus opens up the default material library. I can just select water from that and assign it to my flow region. Uh, the only point I want to make here is that you can edit the properties. So you can change the viscosity and density to model any separate fluid that you have or water, say, at a different temperature or anything like that. And you can just rename the material to whatever you have. 
The next is the boundary conditions. So this is where I'm specifying my inlets and outlets. So for my inlet, I'm just going to specify the flow rate. So instead of looking at the velocity components, I'm going to change the velocity type to flow rate. And instead of mass flow, I'm going to make it volumetric flow and put 16 meter cube per second here. At the outlet is pretty straightforward. I'm just specifying zero static pressure because it just exits out through the atmosphere. The last thing I need to specify is the rotation on my blades. And that is there under advanced concepts, rotating zones, call, uh, and we need to create an MRF rotating zone. So MRF stands for multiple reference frames. So what that means is I have two reference frames in my system. So one would be just the Cartesian XYZ that I get from my CAD. And the second is uh, the zone that I can specify all along this CAD. So the second reference frame, all I need to do is specify the axis of rotation here. So I'm going to specify minus one here as well as the rotational speed. So because we specified the, ax uh, the axis of rotation and the rotational speed, the solver knows the angular velocity at every point in this uh, reference frame, and it can combine that with the first reference frame or the global reference frame. And then we can use that to model the, model the rotation efficiently instead of having to, uh, say, use a moving mesh approach or a transient approach. OK. So now that I have green check boxes everywhere, I'm pretty much good to go. I can start a new simulation based on the setup that I've specified by hitting the plus button here. Uh, I also get some estimates for how long the simulation is going to take and how many computational resources it's going to use up. So I can just hit start. And you'll notice once I do that, uh, the simulation is actually sent off to a virtual machine in the cloud, and it just runs in the background. So uh, what that means is, I'm, I'm free to do whatever I want while the simulation is running in the background. I'll get an email when it's complete and I can come back and check the results. So I can keep, uh, I can keep um, pre-processing or I can start new simulation runs as well while this is happening in the background. So say I want to study a different operating point. Uh, if it's 12 meters per second, I can just change the input very easily, hit plus and start a new simulation run. And this time, this time I'm going to name it 12 meter cube per second and hit start. Now this simulation run is set off to a different machine in the cloud and I don't have to worry about this either. So this way I can set up as many simulations as I want and basically uh, create a performance curve or look at all the different operating points that I need to. Once I'm done with the setup, uh, it's very easy to use this as a template to study new designs. So as I showed you with the results, uh, I had a, a few problems with this first design, right? I had some flow separation around my guide veins. The pressure equalization wasn't great around the neck of this draft tube. So I have a second design already uploaded here where I try to address those problems. So with this, I have slightly different, uh, the, the angle of the guide veins is slightly different and the draft tube shape is different where the neck is elongated and the outlet shape is also changed. So if I want to study this design, I don't need to go through the setup process all over again. I can just duplicate the simulation and you can, you'll notice that I get a new simulation called copy of design three and I can just rename this to design four, switch out my geometry in the geometry tab this, to this new design and I'm pretty much good to go. So as I've, as I've shown you, the setup process is pretty straightforward. But if you do run into any kind of trouble, it's very easy to reach out to our support team. So we have in-product chat at the bottom right, and this is staffed full-time by our application engineers. So you can just send us a message and you'll get a reply pretty quickly. Uh, the best part about this is uh, with a professional SimScale license, all your, uh, all your projects are completely private, but you can give our support team access to look at your projects by checking this uh, share project with support box at the bottom. So our support engineers can use the same URL and basically open up your project on their end and look at what you're looking at in real time. So that makes the support instantaneous and you don't have to worry about sending over a bunch of data, over email attachments, or just browsing forums or anything. The support is just instantaneous. Right, so now that I've shown you how you can study a couple of different designs, let's jump back to the presentation and look at some additional results. So the first thing I want to compare with my second design that I showed you is how my guide veins are behaving now that I've changed the angle. 
So on the left is the first design and you can see the heavy flow separation uh, and on the right is a modified design where I've uh, increased or made the angle of attack of the guide vanes different. So as I can immediately see that the flow separation uh, and the recirculation behind these blades is a lot lesser and that will mean that less of the energy of the water is actually wasted in this process. Now let's compare the performance of the draft tube by looking at the pressure. So with the first draft tube around the neck, I had noticed that the pressure gradient was a bit too steep. Whereas with the second design, I've elongated that neck and I can see that the transition from this green to yellow, uh, according to this legend, is a lot smoother. So this will minimize any losses that would occur in this region. The next thing I want to compare is the exit of the flow through the draft tube. So the first design had a circular exit and I can see that the a swirl or the rotational component of the flow here is a lot higher. So that would equal more, again, more wasted energy. Whereas with the square or the rectangular uh, draft tube exit on the modified design, I can see that that effect is a lot lesser and therefore uh, the less of the energy of the water is going to be wasted in that process. The next most important thing to look at is the blade surfaces. So here I'm plotting the pressures on the front and back of my blades. And this is then used to calculate the torque uh, that the blades actually generate. And that can be multiplied by the RPM to get the power. So this power is then used to determine the efficiency. And uh, we can do that next by plotting some performance curves. So on the left is a curve of the efficiency versus flow rate. So I showed you a couple of different operating points. So I can see I showed you 16 meter cube per second as well as 12. And I also ran a couple of other operating points and I'm studying the efficiency for all those points for these two designs. So I can immediately see that with my modified design, I'm uh, seeing a, an increase in efficiency, especially at the lower flow rates. Now on the right is another typical performance curve. So this is uh, efficiency, but now we're looking at the, the stator blade angle. So we've changed the angle of attack of the guide vanes and we want to see what actually provides the best efficiency. So for our case, it's about 40. Uh, for In this case, it was about 40 degrees that uh, provided a, uh, the best efficiency. Right, so that was just a quick overview of some of the results that you can get from running simulations like these on our platform. Uh, thank you for listening and I hope you have a good one. Thank <music> you.